As we turn next to the latest in the ongoing tension and escalating uncertainty in the Middle East, the commander of the Israeli military has reiterated the country will respond to Iran's unprecedented attack last weekend. We are closely assessing the situation. We remain at our highest level of readiness. Iran will face the consequences for its actions. We will choose our response accordingly. Chief of Staff Herzi Alevi making those comments as he visited an Israeli air base, one of the few targets Iran managed to hit. The base sustained minor damage. Alevi also told the troops there Iran's attack, quote, will be met with a response. He did not offer any details. The latest Israeli pledge to counterstrike comes in defiance of mounting international calls for de-escalation. Let's this morning rejoin Chris Brown, who is in Jerusalem as part of our CBC News team once again on the ground and covering this war. Chris, good morning once again. I'm wondering, as you cover things, as you speak to people and take a look around, what's your sense of how people are feeling as they must be waiting and wondering what's going to come next? What's your sense of the mood? Well, I think we've entered a period of waiting, as you say, but also watching, waiting to see what the response of Israel's military and its government's going to be to those Iranian missile strikes uh, over the weekend, but also watching for any sign of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. He's been conspicuously silent uh, for at least 72 hours or so. It's been Israel's top generals who we've heard who have been leading the discussion about what will come next. Uh, Netanyahu has long spoken about trying to create a larger coalition of countries to take on Iran. And to some degree, we did see that happen here on Saturday night with the involvement of military forces from the United States, from Great Britain, even Arab countries, all combining to take out those drones and missiles before they could cause a whole lot of damage here. And yet, there have been reports in Israel's media that Netanyahu has been declining calls from Western leaders over the next steps against Iran, which might indicate he's reluctant to open Israel up to being pressured on other areas because of that cooperation, particularly pressure involving the war in Gaza. In other words, by accepting help, he doesn't want to be reined in uh, on other areas, Heather. On the other hand, I should say, just a few days ago, remember Benjamin Netanyahu was being criticized at the highest levels of the U.S. government very openly for Israel's actions in Gaza, and now uh, those very same critics are working with him because of Iran. So. He does seem to have a clear interest in keeping this fight going. Chris, just in introducing you, we played that clip, Israel restating there will be some form of response, but we still don't know nature, scope, timing, those things. What is the latest that you are hearing there in your reporting in terms of the options Israel is considering? Well, obviously, a lot of the world does not want Israel to make a response. It was, after all, Israel's attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus more than two weeks ago now that killed several top Iranian commanders. That sparked this round of military confrontation between these very old adversaries. One way of looking at Iran's response was that it was large enough so that Israel had to mount a strong defense and yet not so strong nor successful uh, that it led to casualties. But Iran clearly did erase a very significant red line that's held for decades in that it attacked Israel directly. It's a very strong political message sent, and that really seems to be what is driving uh, Israel's response right now. Its options include, well, doing nothing, perhaps hitting back against targets in Iran directly, uh, that would be very significant, or maybe opting to strike at some of Iran's proxies in the region, such as Hezbollah and Lebanon. And that really seems to be what much of the discussion uh, internally here in the media is focusing on. The war in Gaza has not led to any of Israel's stated victory conditions. The release of the hostages, the destruction of Hamas, neutralizing it from any future attacks in the territory. So going after Hezbollah might offer Israel's government a distraction and possibly even a modest military win. But, Heather, it is a very dangerous strategy and it comes with risks of escalation. And that's why there has been such a strong intervention as we've seen from outside this region to try to de-escalate. Chris, thank you so much as always. Chris Brown, live in Jerusalem, part of the CBC News team on the ground in Israel to cover the war for us. Chris, thanks again.